Are you moving to Ontario, Canada? If the answer is yes, then most likely your priority is to find a place to stay. You want to rent here because you want to actually understand the market before you buy. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about renting before you move here. Hi, if this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living, eating, sleeping, playing, working in Markham, Ontario and the surrounding areas of York region, then subscribe below and tap the bell for notifications so you can be the first to know about the current market in this area. And if you find this video valuable, all I ask is you hit that like button. My name is Faiza and I've been helping people just like you make that move to Markham and I love it. As a local real estate agent here, I want to help you make that move. So whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days, give me a call, shoot me a text or send me an email and I'll be happy to help you make a smooth move to Markham. You can find all my contact information in the description below. All right. So this is what we will cover today. Different ways you can search for a rental property, identifying the neighborhood, what kind of different accommodations you can be looking for, what questions you should ask, some budgeting tips, the documents that you will need, and lastly, signing the lease agreement and the action steps before moving in. First thing first, you need to know that it can take anywhere between a week to six weeks to find a home for rent. A lot of it has to do with demand and supply and some landlords are hesitant in giving their property for rent to a new immigrant. So to combat that, you make sure you start way ahead of time before you move here. Let's talk about the ways you can search for a rental property. First, decide on your approach to finding a rental. Is it going to be your self search or will you use a realtor or it will be a little bit of both. If you're searching on your own, you can explore sites like Viewit, Condos.ca and apps like Craigslist, Kijiji, Zumper, Padmapper and Facebook Marketplace. You can connect directly with the landlords on these apps. It may take some time, but you will likely find a good deal. That being said, you wouldn't know if you're being scammed, which happens way too often. And also you wouldn't know if any illegal activities are being practiced. You also will have to manage the entire transaction on your own, including the paperwork. If you want to use a realtor, you can use realtor.ca to find a realtor. The listings on Viewit and condos.ca usually have the name and contact information of the realtor who's attached to that listing. So you can reach out to that person. There are quite a few advantages of using a realtor. One, you don't have to pay anything. The commissions are paid by the landlord. Two, realtor can guide you to what documents you will need and they can handle the entire process from start to finish. Three, it saves you time and headache of searching and calling each landlord and arranging time. And four, they will only show you authentic listings. So very least possibility of getting scammed. That being said, if you're using a realtor, you will likely not find a deal as the commission is built into the rent and the options are also limited to the listings that the realtors has access to. Now let's talk about identifying the neighborhood. You know that you're coming to Canada and you know that you're coming to a particular province. You also need to identify the city and the neighborhood where you would like to live. Some factors that you should consider while researching for the neighborhoods. Average cost of rental in that specific neighborhood, your commute time to the downtown core or the city center, or even your place of work, monthly traveling cost, walk and transit scores. If you have kids proximity to schools, your workplace, your grocery stores, transportation, shopping malls, place of worship, all that stuff is important. Is the parking included? What is the crime rate? What are the noise levels? As a newcomer, it is better to find accommodation that is closer to transit. You won't have a car right away and it will be cheaper to take transit versus using services like Uber and Lyft. Okay, now that we've pinned the neighborhood, we now need to decide on the type of accommodation. You have apartment, condos, house, and then basement apartments. Apartments are units in a low rise to a high rise building with elevator access. Apartments are usually handled by property management companies and are used for rental purposes only. There is no personal ownership. The units are not listed on MLS, which is the multiple listing system, which means the realtors do not have access to these listings. 
Condos are units similar to apartments except that units are owned by individuals and the whole building is managed by condo corporation. Because individual units are owned, the owner can put it up for rent on MLS or by himself, which means realtors have access to these listings. There are different kinds of houses. There are townhouses, semi-detached, and then detached. All of them can be listed on MLS. For townhouses, if it is not an end unit, you will likely get the entire property to yourself. However, for the semi-detached and detached, some landlords rent out the top portion and the basement separately. Basement apartments are basically lower level of the house, generally below the street level. It usually has a separate entrance. Okay, so let's talk about what questions you should ask your realtor or the potential landlord. What is included in the rent? Are utilities included? Is there internet or cable? Is parking spaces included? How many parking spaces? Are the appliances included? Is it shared laundry? If main floor and basement are rented out separately, how are the utilities shared? If you own pets or intend to get one, ask if pets are allowed. Can you personalize the space like hanging up some frames or hanging up the TV on the wall? How long is the lease? When is the move-in date? What kind of payment is preferred? Would they like cash or would they like check or e-transfer? Now let's discuss what should your budgeting look like for rental in Canada. Rent can be different depending on the city, the neighborhood, size of the house, the rental market, etc. As your initial search, look at realtor.ca or apps like Zumper to get a rough idea about what the rent is in that neighborhood. Cost of utilities can also vary depending on the family size, the usage, size of the house and the time of the year, your utilities could be upwards of about $300 per month. What are some of the essential documents that you will need? The landlord can ask for your ID, employment letter, recent pay stubs, credit report, references from friends or family or previous landlords in Canada, bank statements. Now. Pretty much all these documents are difficult for newcomers to provide. If you don't have any employment yet, you will have to show sufficient funds to cover more than a couple of months worth of rent. It will also help if you can find a local guarantor or a co-signer who can sign on the lease on your behalf. And to make up for the absence of a credit report, you can consider providing a letter from your bank or bank statements from at least last three months that show that you have sufficient funds. Okay, so you found a place, you love it, you got all your documents together. The next step is to submit your application form to the landlord. At this point, I highly recommend that you arrange a video call with the landlord first. You can get a a wipe if this is the right landlord for you. You can get all your questions answered and vice versa. If you're using a realtor, the realtor will compile an offer with all your documents. Once you're accepted as a tenant, your landlord will share the lease agreement for you to review and sign. What is a lease agreement? A lease agreement is a document that basically outlines the rent you'll pay and mention the dates of your lease, contact information of both landlord and tenant, how the rent is going to be paid along with other rules around pets and smoking what happens at the year at the end of the of the lease etc once the agreement is signed you will submit your deposit in ontario your, your deposit is the first and last month rent and depending on the landlord could include the key deposit and pet deposit Now, before you celebrate, some key action items you need to do before moving in. You need to get renter's insurance with minimum $1 million liability. You also need to set up the transfer of utilities. The landlord should provide you with the name of service providers and then the process is pretty straightforward. The utility providers also guide you step by step. And lastly, you need to arrange a day with the landlord to get the keys. On the day you get keys, make sure to do a walkthrough of the unit with the landlord. If there is any damage, take photos and show the landlord as well. This will be uh, on record that the damage was there before you moved in. Most importantly, make sure you save the landlord's phone number. Now you can move in and celebrate. I hope you found some value in this video. If you found this helpful, all I ask is you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I also send out a weekly newsletter where I talk all about living in York region. If you're interested, the link is also in the description below. 
Until next time, I'll see you guys around town.